Oh my God, it's him. Hi guys. Welcome to the guinea pig session. <clears throat> if you saw the post about a half hour or so ago, I, it feels like my the screen's really weird here. I'm not sure why, but anyway, that's just me looking at myself because when you have a weird subject, it looks weird. Um, <clears throat> I promised uh, a few people have been texting me and saying, hey, uh, how come we didn't get to hear the song you sent to Jimmy Fallon? So I'm going to do that for you. And I, I'm trying to set this up so I can try to do it the way I did back when I first recorded this song. But uh, I wrote this song. Oh, wow. Uh, my daughter Mara was like seven at the time. So this has been like 20 years ago. And uh, a week or two ago, I was watching, I watch Jimmy Fallon in The Tonight Show every night uh, from his home. And of course, I also watch Kimmel and uh, Stephen Colbert, too, because they're, they're really funny. And it's always fun, especially when they interact with their kids. And a couple weeks ago, um, Jimmy was, was in the middle of a monologue or something, and his daughter Franny came running in. And she's like, I, I guess she's like six or seven. And she was so excited, and she whispered in his ear that she had just lost her tooth. So I thought, just for fun, last week I, I, I sent a message to uh, the Jimmy Fallon people with this song that, uh, that Mara wrote with me when she was probably about six or seven years old. And uh, she came up with the idea of um, ways to make money from the Tooth Fairy. And so she was giving me the ideas, and I, and I wrote the song. And so some people had heard about that probably because of my big mouth. And they said, how come we didn't get to see the video? So I thought I'd do this for you guys. And uh, Mara's on here and she just did a face plant. Um, so you gotta remember she was like seven at the time. And now she's like uh, this, this big professional person working out in the real world. So uh, I'm embarrassing her again, as I do with all my kids. So this is called the Tooth Fairy, it goes just like this. Brother and I got into a fight I can't wait until tonight Cause in that fight I lost a tooth The tooth fairy's coming Gonna bring me some loot Whoa, tooth fairy Bring me a dollar or two One, two You know, tooth fairy I'm counting on you I know I look a fright Hit a brick wall with my bike. Ow! Happy as can be, tell you what I'll do. The teeth are going under my pillow to say, Whoa, Tooth Fairy, bring me a dollar or two. One, two, you know, Tooth Fairy, I'm counting on you. I'm going to try to do it. Play uh, two instruments in one. Here we go. Hang on with that. Good deal. I get two bucks for each tooth. What a steal. I can't wait for my next tooth to come out. I'm going to sing and shout. Here we go. Whoa, Tooth Fairy. Bring me a dollar or two. One, two. You know, Tooth Fairy. I'm counting on you. I said, Whoa, Tooth Fairy. Bring me a dollar or two. One, two. You know, Tooth Fairy. There it is, Tooth Fairy. I know, Mara, I still owe you money for that one, don't I? <laughs> so, and, and I'll tell you, it, it's been probably three or four years since I actually proved to people that I, I'm multi-instrumentalist and play the kazoo. So, uh, so there it was, the kazoo for y'all. So, um, I got another song I'm gonna I'm gonna do with, 
that Mara helped me write, but, but for first I want to do this song that uh, my daughter Christy, uh, Kristen, Kristen Gail Hawkins, back when she was about 11 years old, she helped me write this song. She's now uh, 30, 30, 30, and uh, today is her her wedding anniversary, her and her husband, my son-in-law, Dave, and... Uh, And it was one night, um, the kid's mom, uh, she was going to the mall with the kids, but Christy was sick, so she had to stay home. So I was home with her. 11, she was about 11 years old. And uh, she was like 11-year-old kids can be. She was kind of whining because she was stuck at home. And I said, why don't we write a song together? Go up to your room and think about what you might want to write a song about. And um, after about, uh, I don't know, a half hour, or hour, she came down and she said, I always wondered what blind people see when they dream at night. So we wrote this song together called Blind Boy's Dream. And it ended up on one of my albums. And it also ended up on a compilation album that was released over in uh, Europe. And just like Mara, every once in a while, Christy says, did, did we ever get any money from that? <laughs> so anyway, this is Blind Boy's Dream. I think it's on the, I think it's on the Hotel DeVille album. But if you go to uh, Spotify or iTunes or one of those places you can find the song there. Joey went to sleep tonight in Boston But his dreams took him very far away Grand Canyon was grand In shades of red and tan Las Vegas lights calling him away Joey, where'd you go last night? Tell me how long did you stay? Tell us your story in your own way. Bright colors and lights, or do you is it starless nights? What do blind boys see when they dream? Joey woke up this morning in Boston. The sky was a bright shade of blue. Could have been a hazy gray or a bright and a sunny day. Tell me, Joe, do you hear the kids at play? Joey, where'd you go last night? Tell me, how long did you stay? Tell us your story in your own way. Bright colors and lights, or do you? Is it starless nights? What do blind boys see when they dream? of God. God's eyes were smiling bright, gave Joe a blessing that night, cause Joe sees better than most of us see. Joey, where'd you go last night? Tell me how long did you stay? Tell us your story in your own way. Bright colors and lights, or do you is it starless nights? What do blind boys see when they dream? Joey, we know where you went last night. God gave you a special light. Cause you see much better than most of us see. You see much better than me. Blind boys dream. Um, I do think that is on, uh, the, I think that is on the, um, the, the Hotel de Ville album. Um, and you know, y'all are showing up. This is great. Thank you so much. On a Saturday night, I, I thought y'all would be out. Oh, never mind. That was in a previous lifetime. Uh, I hope everybody's being safe, feeling safe and, uh, doing well. So I, I said I was going to do three songs, but if a bunch of you are here and want to hang around for a bit, I'll just start. I'll just start bringing some more stuff out and playing it for you. Uh, I'm just going to pull it out of my uh, head and, uh, and, and do them for you. 
maybe do a little half hour show instead of just three songs, if that's okay with you. I mean, if not, just say, hey, go to bed or whatever. I, I got a bottle of bourbon with my name on it. Actually, it's Ezra Brooks' name on it. But, but anyway, I, I told you I was going to do three kids songs. Uh, well, that was kind of a kid song, but it was a, a song that was written with Christy, my daughter. So let me do another song that I, uh, I wrote with Mara. This time, she was probably about eight or nine, I think, when we wrote this song. She decided she wanted to write a song about vegetables. <laughs> so we wrote this song, and it, it's called Broccoli. And the song says, I don't like broccoli. And the very first time I played it out in public, it was at a festival up in northern Ohio. We're up there in front of about 1,500 people, and... I brought Mara up on stage because she was my co-writer and she stood there saying, I'm not going to sing. And I said, what do you mean you're not going to sing? And she said, this is a lie. She did, said, Dad, we can't do this song because it's lying. And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, the song goes, I don't like broccoli. And she said, I actually do like broccoli. So I convinced her we had to just pretend when we did this. And it's become the unofficial official song of just about every farmer's market I've played all around the country, out in California down in Nashville, one or two down in Florida, and they always say, you know that broccoli song, why don't you do that while you're here, so. I don't like broccoli. Don't put it on my plate, please. Give me something else that's green. Like a nice big bowl of fresh green beans. Now sometimes I don't eat my peas. That doesn't make my mom pleased. But I'll gladly eat up all my corn. To get me to do that, you don't need to twist my arm. <laughs> I just made that up though. I don't like broccoli. Don't put it on my plate, please. Give me something else that's green Like a nice big bowl of fresh green beans I really like spaghetti with tomato sauce Uneaten meals mom never has to toss So give me a plate of Italian please Be sure you include fresh ricotta cheese but I don't like broccoli. Don't put it on my plate, please. Give me something else that's green. Like a nice big bowl of fresh green beans. Vegetables is nice To make them rhyme I never have to think twice But sometimes I begin to fuss When I have to rhyme With asparagus But I Don't like broccoli Don't put it on my plate Please Give me something else That's green Like a nice big bowl of Fresh green beans. I said I don't like broccoli. Don't put it on my plate, please. Give me something else that's green. Like a nice big bowl of fresh green beans. Or Kermit D. Frog with a bowl of mint ice cream. Broccoli. I actually like broccoli too, so so hope you enjoyed that. And, and as you can tell, it's it's a kid show as well. So I I have to I keep I keep um I keep hinting over and over again. This is probably the first year in about 190 years that I didn't end up with at least one, if not about one case of um, 
of Thin Mint Cookies from Girl Scouts of America. It's just a hint. If you want to private message me and ask me what my address is, and you happen to have a case laying around. And uh, I was talking to my buddy Dave Giroux out there, down there in uh, Las Vegas the other day. Dave and I, are, we're, he's like a brother to me. We've known each other for 50 years, and uh, he is just as warped as I am. We, spent, we used to spend a lot of time together. We lived together for four years in seminary between the ages of 14 and 18. And, um, and that, that does something to you. But uh, his granddaughter is a Girl Scout. And around Christmas time, I get this package in the mail. And they were, I kid you not, they were called Thin Mint Covered Almonds. And oh my God, if there is a legal brand of crack, that's what that stuff was. And um, so I got a hold of his granddaughter. Uh, I call her my niece. I'm Uncle Dave. And I said, I said, Cassie, if you can get a hold of like a 50 gallon barrel of those, I will pay you whatever. And I haven't seen any more of those. So, but anyway, um, my granddaughter, Kaylee. Kaylee Leary, now it's Kaylee Broughton because um, she grew up and got married. Um, so all my kids, all my kids and grandkids are getting older. Thank God I'm still, you know, the 18 year old that I am. <laughs> I crack me up. Anyway, um, Kaylee was the inspiration for this song because uh, one year when she was a Girl Scout, she called me up and she said, Grandpa, you want to buy some cookies? And uh, unfortunately, I didn't buy enough because they, they seemed like they evaporated. So uh, with that in mind, I wrote this song called Girl Scout Cookies. Thank you, Kaylee, for giving me this song. And over the years, more and more Girl Scout troops all around the United States seem to be using this song. I, I've heard it show up on various troops' uh, Facebook pages, which is really kind of cool. So this... This is for Kaylee and a thanks to all the Girl Scouts all around the world. Depression is setting in. I'm sure that it's the end. Fall into a deeper shade of blue. What am I going to do? I need something to save my life Help me get along with the wife Somebody help me please I'm pleading on bended knee Thank God for Girl Scout cookies Sleeve up thin mints and I'm okay Package of Samoas A few dozen do -si dos I'll be quite happy It'll be a brand new day Well, it's back a few months ago when she came to my front door She looked me straight in the eye And asked me if I would buy Not a penny did she ask Sign on a line, my only task Two months later I'm happy as can be For dinner I'll eat two or three dozen and I'll say thank God for Girl Scout cookies sleeve of thin mints and I'm okay package of Samoas a few dozen do -si do I'll be quite happy It'll be a brand new day Now 
now my doctor tells me I need to eat right. She said I need some fruit and fiber in my life. She said I need some fruit and fiber in my life. Well, Samoa's got coconut and oatmeal's a grain. All that chocolate helps to feed my brain. Now this little girl's back in my front door And I'm hoping she's bringing some more S'mores <laughs> Then it hits me like a runaway truck I owe the Girl Scouts 90 bucks Everybody But I'll say Thank God for Girl Scout cookies Sleep up thin, man Leave up thin mints, I'm okay, and I'm okay. Package of Samoas, package of Samoas, a few dozen dozen dozen, a few dozen dozy dos. I'll be quite happy, I'll be quite happy, it'll be a brand new day. Now I know y'all want to sing one more time, let's go. Yes, I'll say, thanks. God for Girl Scout cookies. Sleeve up thin mints, and I'm okay. Package of Samoas, a few dozen dosy dos. I'll be quite happy. I'll be quite happy. It'll be a brand new day. Oh yes, I'll be quite happy, it'll be a brand new day. <laughs> Thank you if you were singing along. And uh, whichever, whichever of my kids showed up, thank you for coming and not being too embarrassed. That's good. I've never heard Rocco sing, so I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Oh, Kaylee, you're killing me. <laughs> I will do that. That I have to retune for that, Kaylee, but I will do Celtic to the core for my last song because I have to retune for that, which means I have to talk a lot more than I am right now. So this is a song that, that always, I'm going to do two songs that get requested so much when I play out live. They're off of the album that came out in 2017. And then I'll do one more song I'm gonna finish up with, Celtic to the Core, because uh, one of my five great, uh, one of my five favorite granddaughters asked me to do a song. So um, made a request, so I will do that. But um, anyway, um, don't forget Tuesday night, it's One Take Tuesday at 7 p.m. So if you're here now, I want you to show up. Uh, it'll be like an hour, 45 minutes to an hour show. Last week's it went about five or 10 minutes over. And uh, some people have been throwing some some requests at me over the last few days asking me to play them on Tuesday. They will be there. But anyway, I want to do these for you. This song was actually inspired by my wife, Wendy, although it has nothing to do with her. I have to say that. And once you hear the song, you understand why. But she gave me the kernel of the idea for this one day when I was working in a living room in Cincinnati when we still lived there, uh, I had poured myself a little bit of bourbon and um, set it down on the table next to me. I had to run to the studio to get something. I have adult ADD. At least I think that's what I have. I wasn't really paying attention when the doctor told me. And I came back about an hour and a half later and my bourbon was still sitting there. Wendy came through the room and she looked at me and she said, you are certainly drinking quite a bit. And I said, you're thinking I'm drinking way more than I do. So that's where this song came from. It goes just like this, it's called Married to a Bottle. You're thinking I'm drinking way more than I do. I don't think I drink quite enough to put up with the likes of you. It's another round of bourbon Just to get me through the night You curse at me and I curse at you Nothing I do is right 
I'm married to a bottle Keeps me sane or so it seems It's a marriage of convenience Just me and old Jim B. Well, you smiled and you told me I was your man Then you turn around and you act like You don't give a darn I censored that Well, maybe your baby Shouldn't be your man I should turn around, just walk away Maybe, darling, that's your plan. I'm married to a bottle. Keeps me sane, or so it seems. It's a marriage of convenience. Just me and old Jim B. I never really wanted things to end this way. I thought we'd be together for the rest of our days. Now my heart's about as empty as this bottle I hold. I guess I'll be all alone. Till the day I grow Cause I'm married to a bottle Keeps me sane or so it seems It's a marriage of convenience Just me and old Jim B Married to a bottle. <laughs> it's kind of, oh, there's a little hair right there. You know, if anybody wants to cut my hair, don't. I saw I saw the other day on, on Facebook, somebody put a meme, and it was a drive through barber, which I thought was rather funny. This guy was sitting in a chair outside this open window, and, and a guy with a mask on was reaching out, cutting his hair. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if I trust that or not. Hey, you want to you want to fries with that haircut? So, anyway, two more songs. Kaylee, you better not leave because I'm going to do the song you wanted. So, after this song, this is a song. It, it's a it's a sleeper hit as well. Um, I long story, and a bunch of you have already heard that heard this story. So just cover your ears or, or go get a bourbon. You got about 45 seconds, but. Um, I wrote this song uh, when I was down in Cincinnati, and um, I have I have a demo studio where where I demo stuff, which means you you play guitar and sing, and maybe you might throw some other instruments on it, and then I send them down to my publisher down in Nashville, and with the hopes that he'll be able to go out to some of the stars, or, or he and his staff will go out to some of the stars and say, hey, we we got a song, you ought to listen to this song from one of our artists, and. Um, I wrote this song all, all in one, one sitting. The, the song just came to me all at once. And I, I, the, it, the idea came to me because I heard that this young woman was getting ready to go to the mall. She had teenage daughters who were giving her grief about the way she chose to dress to go to the mall. And oddly enough, her husband came to her defense. So when I heard this story, I wrote this entire song. And um, I was playing back my the demo I had I had recorded, and my wife Wendy burst through the studio door. Usually, the only time she does that is to yell at me about leaving my socks and underwear leave, laying all over the house. But she said, "You got to put that on an album." And I said, "Well, no, I'm not." And she says, "No, you're putting that on an album. I I don't care. You need to put it on." And I wasn't going to, but now it's become one of the top two requested songs at my live shows. So I'm going to do it for you. And uh, 
if you like the song, uh, if you like the if you like this little show here, uh, tell people to show up Tuesday night at seven o'clock Eastern time. This is a song called Mom Jeans. I'm sure Kaylee, having been a teenage daughter of a mother who probably wore the wrong clothes when they went to the mall and embarrassed her, and her two younger sisters can probably relate to this song. She said, I used to catch every eye Every single time that I walked by People said I was a toast of the town Now a few kids and a few years later I don't think of myself such a hot tater I could tell from what she said she was feeling down And I said, ooh, baby, what you mean to me? Keep loving and hugging you till eternity Listen to what I say and what I mean I still pick you up in a New York minute Chase your love, do anything to win it I think you look so hot Even in mom jeans Even in mom jeans I'm walking down the aisle at the Kroger store Gonna pick up some canned goods and it's out the door Gen X moms in tight jeans and low cut tees Every aisle they're smiling how to do I think I need a break What'll I do? And the Claire all out to find a beauty bit just for me. And I say, ooh, baby, what you mean to me? Keep loving and hugging you till eternity. Let's know what I say and what I mean. I still pick you up in a New York minute. Chase your love, do anything to win it. I think you look so hot, even in mom jeans. in the eye of the beholder don't matter if you're younger or you're older I looked her in the eye and I told her some straight from the heart and straight from me hey You know you still catch my eye Every single time that you walk by Not unless something I just can't deny We raised our kids, it's a lot of years later To me, uh, honey, you're one hot tater Ain't no reason to be feeling all so down I keep saying, ooh, baby, what you mean to me? Keep loving and hugging you till eternity Let's know what I say and what I mean I still pick you up in the New York minute Chase your love, do anything to win it I think you look so hot Even in mom jeans Even in mom jeans How about some black jeans? Or white jeans? Chartreuse jeans? Or even striped jeans? How I love them mom jeans Oh yeah How I love them mom jeans It's it's funny. I got a. This usually doesn't happen to me. I just got a low low uh, battery message. Well, if any of y'all, if any of y'all have grandkids, especially granddaughters, it's hard to say no to them. This is a song, well, they're all songs, people. That's pretty much all it is, one song into another. But um, I wrote this song back in, oh my gosh, it might have been 1996, 1998. Uh, people who have known me for my most, if not all, of my career, uh, bear with me for about 25 seconds. I am going to plug in my phone so I don't lose everything here, okay? So don't go away. This just takes me standing up. dropping a pick, stay there, and plugging this in. So this is a behind the music moment here. And I can't, I can't very well, there we go. That, that makes me feel so much safer now. Anyway, um, back around 90, well, 
I'll tell you, I started my career in 1975, 1976, playing folk and uh, actually the business cards that I had. Hang on a minute, let me try something here. Um, I, I was playing folk, I was calling it folk and red, redneck. And I played around Columbus, a bunch of the clubs around town. And um, I played in a band, actually I was one of the founding members of a band called Taylor Station and we were making some big bucks uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s. In 1981, um, I ran into some issues that caused me to have to maybe back out of music a little bit. Two weeks after I promised uh, my family that I would give up music for a while, I got a uh, call from an agent who was, uh, who was working with a band that was heading out to Nashville. And uh, I had already promised I'd drop out of music, so I said no. Um, I, I got one. Thank you. You didn't get to see. The wife just came down and said, Mara said I need a charger. But I got it. I, I think I'm, uh, I'm good on that. Thank you, Mara. Um, that or I need it for my pacemaker. But anyway... Um, so I, I later found out after I promised uh, my family, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go audition for this band. I later found out that, that the band was Rascal Flats. So, um, but looking back on it uh, philosophically, uh, my my path and my my musical um, my musical path would have gone a completely different direction that may not have been what I wanted it to be. So, um, so I kind of uh, laid off music for a while, and then a good friend of mine named J. Thomas Davis, Tom Davis, in Columbus asked me to join a band that he had called um, General Guinness. So I played upright bass and guitar and sang for a, a traditional Irish band called General Guinness. And I was with them through their first album and through, I think it was 1991 or so. And uh, right after that time, I went back to playing what I called Ameri-Celtic, which was Americana and Celtic music, kind of a, a cross between the two. And I hooked up with a lot of really great musicians, including Peg Buchanan, who's been with me for 25 years. Um, and um, at the time it was uh, Neil Havener and uh, David Day, who played Illin Pipes. And we did our Celtic crossover stuff and I formed a band that started out being called the um, uh, Celtic All-Stars, and then we changed the name to Celtic Core. And I wrote this song with the band in mind and thinking about the fact that there are seven Celtic nations. And so I wrote a song about four of those Celtic nations because so many people say, you know, if you're from over that area, you must be Anglo-Saxon. Well, we're not Anglo-Saxon, we're Celtic Americans. So this is called Celtic to the Core for my granddaughter, Kaylee. Thank you all so much. Board a ship that fateful day Find a new life in America Turn back to see village lights As we left Galway that night As we reached full sail speed My mother's words came back to me Wherever you travel When you reach the American shore Remember my son always You're Celtic to the core Flying out of Heathrow Took the Euro from Paris, France Through the clouds I dreamed of Brittany My heart began to dance when we reached cruising altitude, my father's words came through to me. Wherever you travel, 
any foreign shore. Remember, my child, always you're Celtic to the core. I proudly wear the tartan of the clan from whence I came. Mackenzie, Buchanan, and as others, our proud heritage, our name. Words of Robbie Burns and Prince Charlie still burn within my soul. Stand tall under our banner, hold high our claymore, and proudly proclaim to the whole world Celtic to the core. I'm leaving London, no, I got it. Gonna travel the whole world wide. Like Alice, I'll find a wonderland. See what's on the other side. Wales is the land of our birth, it's true. I keep that in my heart. Wherever I'm traveling, any foreign shore. Me, I always remember I'm Celtic to the core Four nations proud and Celtic Some lost life and liberty They call us Anglo-Saxon We know that just can't be the land of our forefathers is not Anglo, no matter what they say. These nations, proud and Celtic, we stand and shout it from our shore. You can't take our spirit and our soul from us, we're Celtic to the core. Celtic to the core. Celtic to the core, yeah. Celtic to the core. Thanks, Kaylee, for asking me to do that. I, I haven't done that in a long time. Uh, I may have done it over the St. Patrick's Day uh, show. So anyway, folks, uh, that's that was supposed to be the the short uh, the short version um, of one of my shows. I call it the guinea pig sessions because originally I was trying to work on on the audio portion of the show. I think I got that fixed. Now I was working on the lighting section because people said that whenever I was on, I looked fuzzy, and I thought it was just me because you know one or two bourbons and they're like this. But anyway, I think I got that fixed. But every Tuesday. Every frickin' Tuesday, it is One Take Tuesday, and now it's, of course, the uh, the quarantine edition of One Take Tuesday. I used to do it on the Dave Hawkins singer-songwriter page, but I decided, I mean, here, here on my personal page, I think I got almost 2,000 friends, and, um, and not everybody who's on the personal page likes doing the, the band page thing, so I, I think I've got uh, close to 1,000 now on that. And so I was talking to Susan, my social social media lady, uh, who who has been doing wonders. And today's Saturday. Yeah, I know it's Saturday. Did I say Friday? Tuesday is my one take Tuesday. Today is Saturday's whatever it's called. Anyway, um, I'm getting heckled by my own kids. I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, um, um, so so I talked to Susan about it, and I decided what I'm going to start doing is I, I want to share it first with all my friends on my personal Facebook page, and then we're bouncing it over to the singer-songwriter page. Uh, and then it will also show up on YouTube. So if you know anybody who's not on Facebook and you think they might like the music, what I'm going to do is after this this goes to, uh, to the recording, then what we're going to do is we, we dump it over to YouTube, my YouTube channel, which is David Hawkins, I think it's David Hawkins Songwriter, 
look for that. If you go to my DaveHawkins.com page, there's a button where you can find the YouTube channel and you can subscribe to that, which would be cool. So anyway, uh, thank you all so much. And I will see you on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. If you are interested in the, in the uh, information thing on these, it will show you if you want to throw money in the tip jar. Thank you so much. If you are one of the people like me who are out of work right now and not really making any money, I don't want you giving me any money. That money needs to go to groceries or stuff. But if you're, if you're like a, a politician and you're still getting a billion dollars a year and you want to throw me five bucks, I appreciate it. So... <laughs> But, but that's not why I'm not, I'm really not doing this to make money. I'm doing it because I'm home. Uh, I still get a few, few bucks every once in a while from, from my, um, fr from radio play and stuff. So that's helping some of the stuff. But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm ranting, I, I'm babbling now. So anyway, thank you all so much. And, uh, I hope you appreciated the music. I hope you like the music as much as I like giving it to you. I will be back on Tuesday night unless there's a pop-up thing in the next day or two that I throw up, throw up, that I throw out here for you. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, love yourselves, love each other, love the earth. And if I don't see you before, I will see you on Tuesday, 7 p.m., this same bat time, same bat channel. Love you guys. Love you too, Kaylee. Love you and all my grandkids and all my kids and kids-in-law. And again, happy anniversary to my daughter, Christy, and her husband, Dave. Wonderful people they are, as are all of my kids. So God bless you all. This is Dave. Peace out.